Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Hugh Freeze, the Auburn Tigers, wrapping up their first scrimmage of fall camp Saturday morning. And, Dill, we got a lot of fascinating emergers and contributors for this Auburn program during fall camp. Want to get into, I don't know if I would use the word surprise, because we talked a lot about these guys heading into fall camp. That being said, it's nice to see some of this young talent, you know, really put it together during fall camp. But I think my biggest takeaway in you know, we kind of talked about it earlier this week. This Auburn program heading into 2024 just has a much better feel for who they're going to be and who their guys are going to be heading into the 2024 season where we backtracked 12 months ago. We didn't know who the starting quarterback was going to be. We had no clue what the wide receiver rotation was going to be. And on the defensive side of football, you had multiple freshmen that had to play early for this Auburn program. I continue to read the fall camp notes and just say, hey, we know the guys, and we know who are going to be the guys heading into 2024. I think that's a massive storyline for this Auburn program. Really excited to get into some of these surprise contributors coming out of the scrimmage for this Auburn program. Before we get into it, as always, just want to say thank you to you guys and to the Auburn fans, Dill, whether we're talking fall camp, whether we're talking recruiting, just so much buzz around this program. We've personally had a blast talking it. The amount of support, the amount of War Eagles you guys throw in the comments section. We can't thank you guys enough. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, Dill, I want to start on the defensive side of the football. We spent a lot of time talking about this Auburn offense. I know the national media kind of just focuses on this Auburn offense. We think this defense can be extremely salty in 2024. And I want to focus on the defensive line where kind of our biggest question mark heading into fall camp in the 2024 season was the depth on the defensive line. You are starting to hear of freshmen that are going to play early for this Auburn defensive line, kind of headlined by one Blake Blockton, who I think is probably the most important freshman on the defensive line. Now, I think Amaris Williams is probably the best freshman on the defensive line, but Malik Blockton probably the most important because we're a little concerned about the depth on the inside of the defensive line. If Malik Blockton can be a guy for Auburn as a freshman, I think that's a massive storyline for this Tigers defense. It really is, because I, I think you kind of look, as Amaris Williams emerges, you obviously have McLeod, you have Cameron Crawford, you have Keldrick Falk. You kind of know you have a solid, stable edge rushers. But I think as that depth emerges through the middle, especially with guys who can play at a high level, because you essentially do have depth, I would say, for this Auburn team. But it's a question of do you have like that – high level where Auburn wants to be in like a couple of years kind of depth and talent and top end ability. And again, you kind of look at the end of the day for Auburn, it's going to more come through recruiting. It looks like it's really hard to build really great players through that defensive line through the portal. So you kind of want to look for guys like even a Darren Reed or Malik blocked and to start developing into essentially what I think Auburn's going to want their defensive line. to look. It's like. coming. I mean, like we've talked about it extensively. A lot of the emphasis on Auburn on the recruiting trail goes to the offensive players, but you look at what Auburn's doing on the defensive side of the football, specifically along the line of scrimmage, that elite front seven is coming. I think you have elite playmakers on the edge. I don't know if you have elite guys on the inside, but again, if Malik Blockton can emerge as a dude for Auburn as a freshman, I think some massive storylines that, I don't know if Auburn's going to dominate on the inside of the defensive line, but I, we were very concerned about it coming out of the 2023 season. Now we feel pretty good that it's going to be a solid unit in the SEC in 2024 with primarily your star power coming at that edge rusher spot. Now, another really interesting storyline coming out of that scrimmage, Dill, on certain packages, they're kicking Keldrick Falk to the inside. And I am a massive fan of that. For two reasons. One, I think Keldrick Falk is such a phenomenal player, and one of the best values that he brings to this Auburn defense is his versatility, right? He can play the five. He can play the three tech. You can move him all along the defensive line. I don't know if you've seen pictures of Keldrick Falk. He's up to 6'6", 290 pounds. This is a guy that can handle himself on the inside, and that athleticism and length, it's going to be a problem for interior defensive linemen. But why I think that's so important is it allows Auburn to kind of maximize the talent on the defensive line where you want to get Jalen McLeod, you want to get Kieran Crawford all on the field at the same time and having the ability to move Falk to the inside, have Keldrick Falk, Kieran Crawford, Jalen McLeod all on the defensive line playing at the same time. That's a massive storyline. Dill, you saw Michigan 
do that a little bit last year where they had so much talent on the defensive line. They would move Mason Grant to more of that five-tech position, have Kenny Grant, Chris Jenkins on the inside because they wanted to maximize the talent that was on the field. You can only do that when you have special players that have the ability to move all over the defensive line. The fact that Keldrick Falk has that, the fact that they're able to get all these players on the field at the same time, that's it kind of one is really exciting for an Auburn fan because that's a lot of good players on the defensive line, but more importantly, continues to mitigate maybe some of those question marks about difference makers on the inside of the defensive line. Because Keldrick Falk, I mean, he's going to be a difference maker wherever he is on the defensive line. And especially on passing downs, because that was probably the one huge issue it felt like with Auburn last year. Mm-hmm. The pass rush just was very mediocre. It felt like, again, they had good edge rushers and Jalen McLeod was doing his thing, but they didn't really have guys on the inside who are winning. So again, if you can, you have enough depth, I think, in that edge room to get those guys in, whether it's even bringing guys like Amaris Williams through or Jamonte Waller, who frankly feel like they're as ready to play as any freshman in the country, like those type of guys compared to maybe the inside. So again, you have those guys kind of waiting in the wings. If you can get Keldrick Falk into the inside, let Philip Bleedy play on the inside. I think you see that pass rush go. Yeah, just kick way up because last year just was really weak through the middle, but they do have their hammers. I mean, Jason Jones, Isaiah Riggs, they'll do what you want them to do in terms of like being those early down players that's, who can eat up blocks. That's probably the recipe, right? Hey, we're going to play Isaiah Riggs or a guy like Jason Jones. We're going to win on first and second down, stop the run. When we get teams into third and long, we're going to have Keldrick Falk on the inside. We're going to have Philip Bleedy on the inside. We're going to have Kieran Crawford and Jalen McLeod rushing on the edge. That is a formidable, I would even say very good, pass rush for this Auburn defense in 2024. Now, you kind of talked about the lack of pass rush for Auburn in the 2023 season. Another thing that I continue to get fired up about, and we kind of said this heading into fall camp, I love the combination of DJ Durkin coming into this Auburn offense with the kind of linebackers that they have. You go back to Texas A&M, one of the things they were elite at on the defensive side of the football was rushing the passer. They sacked the quarterback 11% of dropbacks. That was number two in the country. A lot of that production came from those off-ball linebackers. And you continue to hear about guys like Eugene Asante or Austin Keys or a guy like Demarcus Riddick as a true freshman being difference makers in some of these blitz packages. Still, some of your best pass rushers on this Auburn defense are at the linebacker position with Austin Keys and Eugene Asante you know DJ Durkin is going to turn it up on opposing offenses. And I think he's stepping into an Auburn front seven that has the exact personnel that he's looking for to run his kind of defense. Well, especially at that linebacker spot. And I really think that's led by us because you saw him even kick down and I to go back to that old Miss game, play a little bit on the edge. I mean, he's a legitimately good pass rusher. He's not just a guy who you need to scheme scheme open, if you will, or scheme a blitz up who he, go, he comes free. And it's great if you can get those opportunities. But again, the way Adrian Cooper was playing and how effective he was at beating blocks, not just being schemed up, I think that's kind of what you're looking for. And especially with a guy like Eugene Asante playing next to him who can cover so much ground and has so much range, I do think that frees up a little bit of them letting Austin Keys go to work. And same with Eugene Asante, frankly, too, because he's good at chasing guys down. You obviously saw that with Jalen Milrow. So I think that they do have a really interesting linebacker room to work with. And it frankly, it was, probably wasn't as productive as you would have wanted it to be. Like. Yeah, you know, DJ, I mean, Adrian Cooper led Texas A&M in sacks from that linebacker position. I, I don't think that's going to be the case because I think he got some horses up front, guys like Jalen McLeod and Keldrick Falk. That being said, I could certainly see a reality where Eugene Asante Austin Keys leads this team in sacks in 2024. Now the big question mark, if you are going to fire your linebackers and blitz your linebackers, you got to make sure you can hold up on the back end. I think my biggest takeaway from fall camp and specifically the scrimmage on Saturday morning is the continued emergence of depth at the cornerback spot. This was probably a question, right? Cause you look at Keontae Scott and Kane Lee. I think that is a very good cornerback duo for Auburn. The question mark was who's cornerback three, four, and five. Right. And Keontae Scott's been dealing with the hamstring injury, didn't play in the scrimmage, which look, I almost think that's kind of a blessing in disguise. Like, obviously, I want Keontae Scott to be full go in 2024. It sounds like that's going to be the case, but it allows guys like Antonio Kite or JC Hart to get more opportunity to hone in on their craft and emerge as kind of that nice depth at the cornerback position. You read the scrimmage notes and say, that's kind of exactly what you're hearing. Apparently a guy like JC Hart is going to be someone that contributes for Auburn in the cornerback room. 
yeah, it's fun to talk about the starters, but fall camp, a lot of the times, I'm more focused on what the depth is emerging for these programs and for Auburn on defense. It sounds like you're getting that depth that you want in that secondary room. Now, Dill, going to the offensive side of the football, I think there's a couple fascinating storylines that, at least in my opinion, kind of kind of flying under the radar. And I want to go to X factors on the offensive side of the football, specifically in the wide receiver room where, hey, we know who the wide receiver one, two, and three are probably going to be, right? Cam Coleman, Keandre Lambert-Smith have kind of asserted themselves as the top two wide receivers. Cam Coleman's getting the superstar treatment. And Cam Coleman's not even playing much in these scrimmages because, hey, we know what Cam Coleman is. We don't need to play him like the other freshmen. Keandre Lambert-Smith sat out. My biggest takeaway is some of the guys that don't get a ton of love are going to be contributors within this Auburn offense, specifically Sam Jackson, Bryce Kane, and Malcolm Simmons. Again, a lot of the excitement in the wide receiver room goes to a guy like Cam Coleman. Auburn brought in a ton of talent in the wide receiver room after Cam Coleman and guys like Perry Thompson. Malcolm Simmons is a state champion in the long jump. You look at Bryce Kane, one of the fastest players on the football field. These kids aren't, I shouldn't say kids, these guys are not going to be playing every single snap for Auburn in 2024, but they are going to be guys that you can kind of sprinkle in, give 15, 20 plays a game, and maybe allow them to kind of create some of those game-changing plays, those game-changing explosive plays on the offensive side of the football that we so desperately didn't have in 2023 for this Auburn offense. And it's just even looking at being a little bit more diverse in the offense in terms of what Auburn was doing because so much of it last year – everything kind of flowed through their run game. And if they got their run game going, they could kind of get the passing attack going to an extent. Obviously, it never really got humming. But everything seemed like it was based off strictly. If they could run the ball, they'd have a shot. I think, again, when you have more diverse set of skills on that outside, on that boundary position, if you will, I think that helps you just open the offense up and be a little bit more unique and and multiple and diverse and put more pressure on defenses where at, at times last year it did feel like well, again, if they can make a play with Jarquez Hunter, they have a chance, or if they can catch someone on a read option, they have a chance. But there wasn't something they could always go to to attack or switch up or, or kind of get creative. I make a stupid analogy, but I'm just going to try to make it anyways. I mean, Hugh Freeze, uh, essentially a chef. He opens the pantry in 2023. He's got two ingredients, and Jarquez Hunter and Rivaldo Fairweather. Right. And now he's opening up the cupboards and saying, I got so many ingredients. I know Hugh Freeze is a damn good chef. If we give him the ingredients – He's going to make a damn good meal. And I feel like the meal is going to be more complete. Like what you said, there's just more ingredients to add into this Auburn offense to manufacture some of those explosive plays where last year you had, again, Rivaldo Fairweather or Jarquez Hunter. If the ball weren't in those two guys' hands, this Auburn offense really couldn't create anything explosive. Last storyline that I continue to monitor is the offensive line. I think a sneaky storyline that is not getting talked enough about, but I think it's going to be talked about over the next couple of years as we see the transfer portal become a bigger, bigger player in the sport of college football. Offensive line continuity is going to emerge, right? There are so many different programs that you take a look at what their offensive lines are going to be. It's going to be completely new faces. We kind of saw that with Colorado last year where they just kind of threw a bunch of new faces on the offensive line. It obviously didn't work out. You look at this Auburn offensive line, there's not really any position battles. Like we know what the starting five is going to be. They're repping every single day in fall camp. A lot of these guys have played a lot of football together. And yeah, you lose guys like Avery Jones, who kind of just got beat out by Connor Lou at the center spot. You lose some solid football players in Gunnar Britton and Cam Stutz, both who struggled with injuries. Because they struggled with injuries, guys like Jeremiah Wright, Xavier Miller, got a chance to play a lot of football. So I look at this offensive line and say, You got four guys that have played a lot of football together. You bring in Percy Lewis, who were fired up at the left tackle spot. I think this offensive line is sneaky, going to be a strong suit for this Auburn offense, which you kind of said it best. Hugh Freeze wants to run this offense through the run game. I expect the run game to be significantly better than it was in 2023, not only because the offensive line, but you also have a passing attack that you can work your run game off as well. Ian, you still got Jarquez Hunter. He's still one of the better backs in the SEC. And I think you're right. At the end of the day, I don't think we'll see many offensive lines be predict- particularly productive if you have more than two transfers on. I think at the end of the day, the teams that are going to be really good, think of the Georgias, the Michigans, the Oregons, even like those offensive lines that have built themselves up 
through homegrown talent. I, I just don't see another way to do it. I just think you see how few really quality like tackles, let's say, hit the portal. I mean, you can get a couple. Percy Lewis is kind of one of those guys who certainly I'm not saying you don't want to have transfers on your offensive line because I do think Percy Lewis is a big addition for them. I think it allows, again, as you said, Dylan Wade to play a much more natural position. But at the end of the day, you see a lot of guys who are now in their second, third years in this program. I think that that's a huge kind of sticking point for me, at least. Yeah, you, I mean, again, I'm not I'm not a Dabo Sweeney guy. I'm not saying you can't use the transfer portal, specifically even on the offensive line. But I think you're right. The best offensive lines that we're going to see in 2024 are the offensive lines that have played a lot of football together and have kind of built their offensive line from the high school ranks. If you can go get a Percy Lewis in the transfer portal – go out and make it happen. Again, he, I think he's a left tackle that could emerge as one of the better tackles in the conference, make your offensive line better, but you don't want to be in a position where you got three or four guys who are new faces coming into the transfer portal, starting on the offensive line. Auburn doesn't have that. A lot of really exciting buzz. And though I feel like the national media is finally catching up. Like Auburn I just, I think maybe it has to do with what they're doing on the recruiting trail, just garnering a little bit more attention. I feel like people are kind of waking up to, what this Auburn team could be in 2024 because they significantly added to their roster. They got better in the spots they needed to get better and specifically the wide receiver room. It's going to be a really fun team in 2024. We'll cut it there again. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. And we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.